North Korea blew up the northern parts of Inter-Korean roads no longer in use on Tuesday, South Korea said. It comes after the two rivals exchanged threats of destruction amid rising animosities over North Korea's claim that South Korea flew drones over its capital. Video provided by South Korea's military showed a cloud of white and gray smoke emerging from the explosion at a road near the border town of Kaesong and North Korea sending trucks and excavators to clear out the debris. Another video showed smoke emerging from a coastal road near the Korea's eastern border. The road's demolition is a display of North Korea's growing loathing of South Korea's conservative government, as its leader Kim Jong-un has vowed to sever relations with South Korea and abandon the goal of achieving peaceful Korean unification. North Korea has accused South Korea of infiltrating drones to drop propaganda leaflets over Pyongyang three times this month and threatened to respond with force if it happened again. South Korea has refused to confirm whether it sent drones, but warned North Korea would face the end of its regime if the safety of South Korean citizens is threatened. Observers say it's still unlikely for Kim to launch preemptive, large-scale attacks on South Korea, because that would certainly invite massive retaliation by the more superior South Korea US force that will pose a threat to his survival. But scenes like today's have been seen before. In 2020, North Korea blew up an empty, South Korean-built liaison office building just north of the border in retaliation for South Korean civilian leafleting campaigns. In 2018, North Korea demolished tunnels at its nuclear testing site at the start of nuclear diplomacy with the US. In 2008, North Korea blew up a cooling tower at its main nuclear complex when earlier disarmament for aid negotiations with the US and others were alive. Fighter jets took off from Shinshu Air Base, Taiwan, after China held large-scale military exercises surrounding Taiwan and its outlying islands Monday. China deployed an aircraft carrier along with warplanes, in a move that underscores the tense situation in the Taiwan Strait. China's defense ministry said the drills were a response to the Taiwanese president's refusal to concede to Beijing's demands that self-ruled Taiwan acknowledge itself as a part of the People's Republic of China under the rule of the Communist Party. The drills came four days after Taiwan celebrated the founding of its government on its national day, during which Taiwan's president Lai ching te said in a speech that China has no right to represent Taiwan and declared his commitment to resist annexation or encroachment. The presidential office of Taiwan called on China to cease military provocations that undermine regional peace and stability and stop threatening Taiwan's democracy and freedom. A map aired on China's state broadcaster CCTV showed six large blocks encircling Taiwan indicating where the military drills are being held, along with circles drawn around Taiwan's outlying islands. China's defense ministry has not said how long the drills will last. China deployed its Liaoning aircraft carrier for the drills, and CCTV showed a J-15 fighter jet taking off from the decks of the carrier, though the exact location of the carrier is unclear. The PLA's Eastern Theater Command spokesperson Navy Senior Captain Li Shi said the Navy, Army Air Force, Missile Corps were all mobilized for the drills, as it was an integrated operation. This is a major warning to those who back Taiwan independence and a signifier of our determination to safeguard our national sovereignty, Li said in a statement on the service's public media channel. Taiwan's defense ministry said it had deployed its warships to designated spots in the ocean where they'd carry out surveillance and stand at ready. It also deployed its mobile missile and radar groups on land to track the vessels at sea. As of Monday morning, they had tracked 25 Chinese warplanes and seven warships and four Chinese government ships, though it did not specify what types of ships they were. China held similar large-scale exercises after Lai was inaugurated in May.
Lai continues the eight-year rule of the Democratic Progressive Party that rejects China's demand that it recognize Taiwan is a part of China. Also on Monday, China's Taiwan Affairs Office announced it was sanctioning two Taiwanese individuals, Puma Shen and Robert Cao, for their work in promoting Taiwan independence. Shen is the co-founder of the Kuma Academy, a non-profit that trains civilians on wartime readiness. Cao donated $32.8 million to fund the Academy's training courses. Shen and Cao are forbidden to travel to China, including Hong Kong.